Is, th is this the moment to reform gun laws? You know, it's, it's easy to go to politics. But it's important. It's at the heart of the issue. I, I get that that's where the media likes to go. Well, it's not. It's where many of the people we've talked to here like to go. The proposals from Democrats and the media, inevitably, when some violent psychopath murders people... A violent psychopath who's oh. able to get a weapon so easily. 18-year-old with two AR-15s. If you want to stop violent crime, the proposals the Democrats have, none of them would have stopped this. But why does this only happen in your country? I really think that's what many people around the world just, they cannot fathom. Why only in America? Why is this American exceptionalism so awful? You know, I'm sorry you think American exceptionalism is awful. I think I, this I think, aspect, I think, I think this I think, aspect you know of it. You get your political agenda. No, it's God, honestly, God love you. Senator, it's not. I just want to understand why you do not think that guns are the problem. Why is this just an American problem? It is just an American problem, sir. Mr. Cruz, why is America the only country that faces this kind of you know what? mass shooting? But you can't, you can't answer that. You can't answer that, can you, sir? You can't answer that. Why you know, is this country... Why is it that people come from all over the world to America? Because it's the freest, most prosperous, safest country on Earth. Maybe the, and it may be the freest, it may be the most... Why are our kids dying in but, That was Texas Senator Ted Cruz running away from a British journalist like the coward that he is because he couldn't answer a very simple question. Now, he'll pretend to care. He'll send out his condolences, thoughts and prayers. He'll grandstand as if he's going to do something to stop this. But notice how the solutions that he proposes don't actually address the core issue, which is guns. One of the things that, that, that everyone agreed is don't have all of these unlocked back doors. Have one door into and out of the school and have that one door armed police officers at that door. If that had happened, if those federal grants had gone to this school, when that psychopath arrived, the armed police officers could have taken him out and we'd have 19 children and two teachers still alive. So we don't do gun reform, we do door reform instead and create fire hazards in schools across the country. And that's the way that we save lives, according to Ted Cruz. This is expected. Now, Ted Cruz isn't the only conservative who's proposing non-solutions. Dilbert creator Scott Adams tweeted, If we made it legal for kids to kill their bullies, a lot of problems would go away. We'd create new problems, sure, but how could these new problems be worse? This is a thought experiment, not a recommendation. Oh, well, thank you so much for the recommendation, Scott. If we subject children to duels to the deaths, then perhaps that can save lives. And, you know, this isn't just a couple of conservatives here and there talking around the issue, tap dancing around the elephant in the room. This is a common phenomenon, and this is what they do every single time. A Media Matters journalist decided to put together a compilation of all of the times Republicans on Fox News have proposed a solution, and she had 50 in particular. And notice how not a single one of these solutions has anything to do with guns or gun reform. I advocate always for an armed security guard, armed school safety officer, armed uh, deputy, arming teachers, potentially arm and prepare and train uh, teachers and other administrators, armed school staffers, bring in policemen, training uh, the students themselves, retired military, retired law enforcement. We can offer them tax breaks. If you give law enforcement the opportunity to impose martial law, we can guarantee safety and security. Securing that perimeter, kind of providing kind of a ring of steel. You have the fences, you have the main administration building, and then you have wide gaps on either side. The fencing's not very high. Where the doors locked, bulletproof glass. All of these shootings have happened at the same time that we see religion and Christian values and, and Ju Judeo-Christian values declining. Anybody who decides that they want to do something like this should immediately know that attacking a school is a death sentence for them. Kids are afraid of being the school snitch. We have to stop um, letting these schools be gun-free zones. People need to put their phones down and get to know the person next to them. We have spent billions of dollars on COVID-related measures for our schools. Let's take some of that money and divert it over to hardening these soft targets. A lot of these private schools, they take security 
way more serious. Parents, take your children to church. This anti-police narrative is forcing people not to call police. A series of interlocking doors at the school entrance that are triggered by a tripwire, and it traps the shooter like a rat. God is the answer to that. There's a moral rot going on that we all need to dig in and try to address. I vote for decreasing social media exposure. We need to start focusing on mental health. Tell us why you think it's important to pray in a moment like this. It calls for faith and prayer. Why is it that schools are protected in the same way that airports? There are some people who don't want uh, 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 police officers in schools with guns because other people are triggered. Uh, assault rifle and enhanced body armor. A notification system to let everybody in the school know what's happening. A single point of entry. I don't like talking about this stuff as it happens because I don't think it contributes anything positive. Parents should be held accountable uh, for raising their children properly. Ballistic blankets. We just don't have the resources to get law enforcement there quickly. How about an executive order for these mental health facilities? We have to start rebuilding this country and returning to God. I, I arm myself everywhere I legally can. It's up to you to protect yourself. So martial law, theocracy, more prayer, um, teaching your children to set up booby traps, kind of like in the movie Home Alone, I'm guessing. So where when a shooter enters the school, he'll trip a wire and that'll lead to a bucket of goo falling on his head, which will then trigger a fan to blow feathers onto him. I mean, this is literally what they're proposing. This, this is actually what they're proposing. Booby trap the school like Home Alone. This is why nothing gets done, because we aren't having a serious conversation with serious people. These are bad faith actors who don't actually want to take action. They're fine with the way things are currently. And one of the common uh, themes that we see is either more funding for cops or more cops. But that didn't really help children in this particular situation. OK, the Uvalde police budget takes up 40 percent of the city's total budget. And they proved that they don't give a damn about saving children. They were too afraid to do anything to intervene and prove to everyone what failures and cowards they are. Cops stood outside the school while an active shooter was there for approximately 40 minutes to an hour and they refused to go in. And to make matters worse, they stopped parents from going in and saving their own children's lives. And that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. Parents begging and pleading with cops to either do something or step aside and let them them do something let them go in and save their children but the cops refused going so far as to handcuff tase and even pepper spray parents who were desperately trying to save their children's lives now gizmodo reporter matt novak shared a local article where a child who survived explains how a cop actually indirectly got one of the kids killed they told the kids to yell for help one of his classmates did and that led to the shooter then targeting and killing that child who yelled for help and the sad part is that help wasn't on the way that child made themselves a target for nothing. Now, local journalist Megan Menchaca shared a Wall Street Journal article which describes how one mom, Angeli Rose Gomez, was handcuffed and told she was being arrested by federal marshals for interfering with an investigation because she dared to ask to go in and save her own children's lives since the cops weren't going to do it. Now, when she was released, she ran inside the school anyway, and she came out with her two children, saving their lives. So needless to say, no, I don't think that more cops are the solution. They proved how incompetent they are. And we're not even scratching the surface with this particular story relating to their incompetence. There's a lot more, but that just goes to show you, no, these solutions are not solutions at all. And a lot of people instinctively blame the NRA. And it's true. Republicans aren't taking action because they've been bought and paid for by the NRA. But that isn't necessarily the full story, because currently in 2022, the NRA isn't as powerful as they were before. As Mike Spies explains, it is not 2013. The Republican Party is no longer beholden to the NRA. It does not need to stand up to the gun lobby. The NRA hasn't made significant election outlays since 2016 and won't be able to again for some time. It is still mired in a costly lawsuit with the New York Attorney General. Its longtime PR firm, which served as the voice of the organization and devised Wayne Lapierre's persona, is long gone. Its most effective spokespeople are long gone. Its most effective leader, Chris Cox, is long gone. Cox's team is gone. Oliver North is long gone. At this stage, any decision the GOP makes is its own. Yeah. And to be clear, it's not like the NRA is the only uh, gun organization in the country. There are others like Gun Owners of America. But for the most part, you know, these donations that they took, it was from a while ago. So the real 
thing that they're worried about is paying a political price. Because if you take action right now, when everyone is still trying to deal with this tragedy, then it makes sense. But in a couple of months, when Americans begin to tune out and forget and feelings change, well, then they might pay a political price for going along with the Democrats and doing gun reform to maybe try to save lives. But the political price that Americans are paying because of Republicans like Ted Cruz and their refusal to take action is much, much higher than losing an election. So Irma Gonzalez is one of the teachers who was gunned down. She tried to save as many children as she possibly could in her classroom and she died. Now, just two days later, her husband, Joe Garcia, overcome with grief, suffered a fatal heart attack and he died. That is what Republican politicians are subjecting your families to. The political price that they may pay for doing the right thing pales in comparison to the price that families have to pay. Now, I have one more video that I want to show you. Uh, and just a forewarning, this video is absolutely heartbreaking. But I think it's important. I think that we shouldn't just detach ourselves from this situation and think, oh, it can never happen to me. Of course it could happen to you. But listen to this father explain how he found out that his daughter, A. Marie, was one of the victims that was gunned down. I'm a med aide. So when I arrived on the scene, they still had kids inside. They started bringing the kids out. And I was aiding assistance. One little girl was just, just covered in blood, head to toe. Like, I thought she was injured. I asked her what was wrong. And she said she's okay. She was hysterical, saying that they shot her best friend, that they killed her best friend, and she's not breathing, and that she was trying to call the cops. And I asked the little girl the name, and she's... <laughs> and she told me, hey, she said, hey, Marie. That's how you learn. She was so sweet, Mr. Cooper. She was the sweetest little girl who did nothing wrong. She listened to her mom and dad. She always brushed her teeth. She did. She was creative. She made things for us. She never got in trouble in school. Like, I just want to know what she did to be a victim. <laughs> She loved being a big sister. You have a three-year-old son yes. named Zane. We have a three-year-old son named Zane who asks for his sister every morning when he wakes up. Just... He doesn't know at this point, I assume. We've, we've informed him that his sister is now with, with, the, God, with the God and that that she will no longer be with us. And of course he just cried. I mean, he's three years old and it's still it's just emotional for him to even process. <sighs> she just turned 10. Her birthday was on the 10th, May the 10th, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. You had a party for it. We had got, we just gathered a family and had a dinner. She just got her phone. She had been wanting a phone for so long and we finally got it for her. And... <laughs> she just tried to call the police. She tried to, she actually tried to call. Yeah. Yes, I got confirmation from two of the students in her classroom that she was just trying to call the authorities. And I guess he just shot her. How you look at this girl and shoot her? <laughs> oh, my baby, how do you shoot my baby? Oh, oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is the pain that Republicans are subjecting Americans to, forcefully so. That father can't run away from this. Now he has to deal with the loss of his daughter and the pain that that brings for the rest of his life. But we have politicians like Ted Cruz running away from reporters like little cowards. So Republicans are not just cowards. They're not just corrupt. They are evil. They are actually evil. They are an organized death cult. And they are not letting any of us escape. They are forcing us to live 
in this society where violence happens every single week. Now, we hear about, you know, certain mass shootings like the one in Buffalo, Uvalde, but more mass shootings have happened. They just don't get reported on. It is a common phenomenon and they are forcing you to deal with this. And if you think that it can't happen to you, you're wrong. Every single parent probably thought this as well. So this is the situation. You know, in a couple of months, you're going to probably lose interest in this story. And perhaps it won't be as salient to you. But these families have to live with this forever. Forever. And these emotions that you're feeling now probably won't come back until the next mass shooting happens, which could be as early as today tomorrow maybe next week we're not sure right but understand this is what republicans are willingly subjecting you to they are forcing you to live in their deranged death cult version of society where it's a dystopia where at any moment if you're at the grocery store at a movie theater if your kid is in school they could be shot dead and that's not the only way that they're killing you they're killing you with climate change they're killing you by not giving you health care so this is the state of America. Just remember who did this to you and don't forget.